welcome back today we will uh, try to understand little bit more about uh, uh, behavioral and cognitive methods we will try to discuss today about the error <coughs> okay so first let us understand what are the impacts of error and how uh, and what are the methods uh, we normally practice to um, measure it or actually evaluate it okay so for why error so definitely i suggest everyone to go for formal definition of error okay in general understanding error means when we are performing a particular task or particular job if there is mistake this mistake can happen due to man or the or like we, we can say the operator or by the machine now how do we understand how do we uh, assess them and based on those assessment how can we take a decision that where the intervention can be done to improve the situation today we will be discussing on that particular area so error analysis is very much important to prevent the further accidents whatever is uh, uh, no we can predict so we can predict the accident and we can prevent them also if we can minimize the, see error free a, a zero error in many cases it may not be possible however we can minimize to the maximum possible level so that the total production or total productivity or performance may increase okay so always when we design a particular system our aim is to minimize the error of course target is zero error however in many cases uh, it may not be possible to achieve but we will try to minimize it as much as possible now when we will be able to able to do this we will be able to do this only when we understand how to analyze it how to measure it right so today we will be discussing two very much useful method through which we actually analyze the error okay so mainly it will discuss about the human error okay so prediction of human error in a particular system so we are actually trying to predict it so it's not that whatever you uh, know after the accidents happen or after the hazard happen then we are actually considering no once the system is in place we are trying to understand what is the possibility to uh, uh, like the error to be present human error to be present so we will be analyzing that so we will be discussing two major Uh, method first one is the systemic human error reduction and prediction approach so from name itself you can understand it's a, it's human error reduction okay so whatever human errors are we are trying to reduce it and actually we are trying to predict it okay so human systemic and of course it's a systemic method so systemic human error reduction and prediction approach we call it in short form sherpa another is task analysis for error identification task analysis for error identification tafi okay so sherpa and tafi today we will discuss sherpa and in the next class we will be discuss the tafi so let's start with sherpa sherpa means systemic human error reduction and prediction approach okay so let us understand who is the inventor of this particular method or tool and how do we use it so it's a particular technique to provide guideline okay so it gives us a guideline for human error reduction and quantification in a wide range of human machine system so whenever we have a system 
where human and machine is interacting in a broad way in a interacting in a bigger way in that case we are trying to understand the human error reduction and we are trying to quantify okay we are trying to quantify what is the kind of human errors are so if we can do this probably this will help us to uh, you know design further how we can reduce and how we can improve the situation okay so it's not very old tool it's very recent tool 2009 so you can understand it's not two decade at all okay so two decades old tool so uh, sherpa is utilized as a basic current cognitive models of human performance of course as i mentioned it's to identify the human error okay we are not right now in this tool talking about the machine error we are talking about only human error so it is to it is associated with your human performance okay so we need to understand we need to really uh, go through the detailed definition of error we need to understand the detailed definition of performance activity productivity uh, uh, compatibility compa uh, no uh, comfortability all these definition so as these definitions are not scope of this particular uh, course i am not going to go uh, for the each definition but i suggest everyone to go for all these definition if you have uh, any query we can discuss it in our question answer session so this technique developed in 1986 by d e embray as human prediction technique so it also analyze the task and identifies the potential solution okay so it analyze the task and identifies the potential solutions to error in a structured manner that's why i said it's a systemic okay it's a systemic process so in a structured manner so this technique is based on taxonomy of human error so let us discuss more about it so sherpa was originally designed to assist people in the process industries okay so initially when it started uh, when it is being designed it was for the uh, process industry specifically for example that uh, conventional and nuclear power generation petrochemical processing oil and gas extraction power distribution etc however similar industries can also use this particular process and nowadays based on the research objective we we use this sherpa method to uh, understand more about human error or to quantify the human error in different other industries as well it's not only limited to these industry okay it's not only limited to these industries initially it was developed for these industry so the overall function of this particular tool or method that is the sherpa is to provide a framework within which human reliability can be analyzed and assessed both quantitatively and qualitatively here it is very important we are actually going to analyze it quantitatively as well as qualitatively so when we have a quantitative method or quantitative data to understand the human error so it becomes very easy for us to establish if there is an intervention and what is the percentage of improvement in the uh, due to the intervention so uh, claiming the return on investment claiming the improvement is very easy as it is quantitative in nature whereas it gives a qualitative assessment also which will help you to argue how this is going to help this intervention is going to help so both way you can get benefit if you use sherpa to identify your error understanding or error error of human performance so it generates specific uh, error reduction recommendation in the areas of procedures training and 
equipment design in all these cases it is possible but it is not limited okay you can depending on your objective research objective you can take some other area as well so uh, i mean to say here that in sherpa we go by three major module so i'll take you one by one first module says that task and human error analysis so what exactly it does that task and human error analyze identify the error modes reduction of errors by timing procedures and equipment redesign so these all the things we are going to discuss in the first module okay in this second module what we are trying to do is quantify the probability of occurrence okay so we are trying to quantify the probability of occurrence of what of the errors identified earlier okay so we are trying to take a case we are trying to take an example and try to identify the probability of occurrence in the error identification okay the next part is provide cost benefit analysis so it is very much quantitative in nature in the second module in the third module what we try to do is we try to assist in choosing the appropriate error reduction approaches so from the second module what we did from the second module we try to understand or we try to quantify that what is the kind of errors happen due to human in your earlier uh, cases okay from there in the third module we are trying to predict that how we can reduce that particular error so it's a very systemic analysis first we are identifying the task we are uh, drawing the you know uh, uh, different agendas what is happening in this particular task then we are trying to quantify that where the problems can happen uh, already happen in a particular case similar case and from them how, from that data we are trying to understand if we do this what is the kind of reduction if we do that what is the kind of reduction so we get lot of comparison so this way in the in specific three module in a specific three phase okay we try to understand the errors performed by the human and how we can reduce it okay so let us understand more about this so quantification model of sherpa so this particular part allows cost effectiveness assessment which need to be carried out and consist of sensitivity analysis now what is this sensitivity analysis it indicates the changes in the system so if greatest effect in enhancing human reliability so if there is a small change what is the impact of that change in the human reliability okay so the, it actually gives you an understanding of sensitivity of that particular error okay so if a single error, i'll just give a small example maybe so if there is a small error in one part of the whole process what is the kind of impact is happening at the end of the process so if the impact is negligible then maybe this error is not having greater uh, you know um, uh, the gravity of this particular error may not be very high whereas if the impact is very high of a small error the gravity of that particular error need to be taken care and there is a point where we need to do an intervention okay so we are actually trying to understand from these impacts how we can prioritize our 
error re uh, reduction starting point. Okay, so definitely there are uh, five errors or six errors. We do not know where to start our in, uh, no intervention. So through this quantification method, we, we will take a decision that where we can start our intervention. Okay, this this is very important. That's why. So uh, this is a kind of overview. So we select the safety criteria of a particular task for every task. We definitely follow some specific safety criteria. So critical events or critical task. From that we do task analysis. Then we do error and consequence analysis because if there is an error, definitely there is an consequence. There is a consequence, right? So what is the gravity of the consequence? So all these things we analyze it, evaluate the current performance influencing factors because if we do not understand the influencing factor of that performance, we may not be able to take a proper decision. So from the error and consequence analysis, we actually take a decision that what are the performance influencing factors and are and how these are having impact in the actual performance. Okay. So once we do that, what we try to understand to uh, improve the efficiency of all these factor to minimize the error probability. And if we do that, then based on the whole model, we try to develop the training or IFU content based on the task and risk available in that particular situation. So this is the overall journey of Sherpa and we try to uh, complete this all component in this uh, when we perform Sherpa. So let us proceed towards the uh, workflow that we do. So it is typically this particular uh, no, sch uh, schematic diagram has been taken from a particular uh, publication that I mentioned in this case. Okay, so this is the um, detail. How it starts? It starts with the analyzing the function and task. Okay, so here we can take definitely help from uh, hierarchical task analysis or any other task analysis method. So we start with the analysis, okay, analysis of the functions and task. Once we do that, what we try to do identify the critical function here it is very important the critical function okay critical function and critical task so we have 10 tasks to be to to be completed right so in that 10 task or 10 uh, 10 steps maybe everything is not critical two or three will be more critical right so we need to understand by seeing the chart seeing the uh, task analysis that which one is critical so we have to identify that critical function and critical task so i am repeating many things in the whole process because these are the very critical portion when you actually try to practice it uh, with your own example okay so once we finish the identification of the critical function and critical task, we collect data on the critical error situation. So this error situation is very important because we need to take these data from earlier incidences. Okay. So it's it's like you know if you want to predict, so you need to really understand what already happened. Okay, so based on that happened data, you need to predict if you do this modification, this is going to happen. So that is the kind of prediction. Okay, so once you identify the critical function and task, you are going to collect data on the critical error situation. This critical error situation, that critical error uh, situation uh, data will give you the identification of causes of human error. 
so human error may never comes automatically right so a person who is skilled enough to do a particular job all of a sudden he or she will not do any kind of error till there is no influence okay there may, must be something which is going to impact or go, which is going to influence the person to make that error i just give an example somebody is doing a particular job and on the particular day maybe due to some mental stress maybe you know something happened in their family or maybe uh, uh, some some conflict with the peer or something there there is uh, you know um what i can say uh, uh, the person who is not in a position to concentrate so lack of concentration on that particular moment for a particular reason so we need to understand that causes of human error so human error once you give a particular training to do a particular job it is expected the person know the whole process still there is an error still there is a you know problem there, there can be a problem okay we need to understand why that problem is that problem due to personal reason or due to some design element exist in that particular situation if we do understand this is related to some design element maybe we have a chance to improve it whereas if it is personal then we need to really understand where that problem is how do we can solve those problem so we get a proper understanding proper categorization of uh, why these errors are coming so causes of human error okay once we get that clarity that where and how the problems are and what are the causes of those particular um, human error what we try to do identify the potential solution to those error okay so if this particular error due to some design element we directly go for the redesigning process if it is related to the training we try to uh, redesign the training if it is related to some personal development we try to go for it so depending on the category that we received from this particular step so this step is very very actually this two step this and this is very important because it gives you an actual decision okay here you need to really take a uh, proper decision if we uh, do some mistake in this two step what will happen the further analysis will go wrong so here expertise is very important okay so it's not that the novice uh, researcher may do it alone they should take help from the experts uh, they uh, they do they do practice it and then they may consult their data their Uh, research ideas with the uh, the research results not ideas the results with the experts then only you can get good result for this and this particular step so once we complete the uh, understand you know uh, we complete the uh, the step where we are analyzing the causes of human error we actually try to seek for what seek for solution okay so we know there are three problems three causes causes of that particular error now we try to understand what are the possible way to give the solution so here now your uh, no actually novelty will come of your research okay so you try to identify those potential solution to those uh, error you once you identify them you model them or uh, do a mock up okay try to see if you do these changes or you do this intervention is there any impact and if there is an impact what is that impact is it reducing or increasing okay so once 
you have all this you do a comparison and go for the selection step and once you do the final selection you go for final evaluation so whatever was there in the beginning and how much you could reduce or how much you could uh, enhance the uh, performance and how much you could reduce the human error so this is the whole process of or systemic workflow of the sherpa okay so let us go into more detail uh, of these steps so we did that this one this this particular process is the overall analysis overall steps now let us go by one by one steps like for this first one analyzing the function and uh, task what we will do we will go for the hierarchical task analysis as i mentioned in our earlier classes that hierarchical task analysis is very much beneficial to give an understanding the steps to be followed in a detailed manner and how the branches are being established in a particular task so for each element of your job how they are connected with the human and the machine how they are connected with each other what is the kind of input you have and what is the kind of output you have for a particular system everything every detail you will get from hierarchical task analysis so this is this should be the very very first step of sherpa so once you identify your task once you identify okay this task uh, we need to analyze for our error analysis very first job is to do a to create a hta table or hta tree okay then you go, go for task classification once you have the task uh, clarified in the tree then you go for the task classification then human error identification as i mentioned in earlier slide then consequence analysis because once you do human error analysis or identification then only you can understand what is the kind of consequence you are going to get due to that particular error if you do that consequence analysis you may also get a chance to understand that is there any possibility to recover that here this particular step is very important okay because in many cases if there is an error there is no chance to recover that particular task i'm just giving example maybe we are in a crockery making workshop okay so if there is a breakage in that whole uh, crockery set okay maybe glass or something so if that happens if there is a chance to recover that you can redo it however if the breakage is too high or the it is not possible to recover that then the impact is very high right so this this recovery analysis will tell you the weightage of your error okay so once we do the recovery analysis we go for the uh, ordinal probability analysis so put it in on a ordinal scale i will discuss it in detail in my next slides then go for the critical analysis and once we do this we go for the remedy analysis so this is the overall uh, steps all these are the steps to be followed for sherpa now let us go one by one in detail anyway hierarchical task analysis you did it earlier so but still i will give you little more idea so as i mentioned sherpa will begin with the analysis of the work activities this particular step is based upon the notion that task performance can be expressed in terms of hierarchy 
either by goal, operation and plan. So what is goal? Goal first you have to fix what the person is seeking to achieve. So it's not only for a particular person if it's a complex system like where two men or two machines are connected with each other then you need to see the goal of the whole system. Then operation the activities executed to achieve that particular goal and the consequence uh, the plan will be the sequence in which the operators are going to execute that particular operation okay so we decide on all those things it's a these are the basic steps to be followed for hta we discussed all steps uh, detailed in hta analysis in earlier classes so you can refer them okay so then is the analysis analyze the goals of the task broken down into subordinate goal at this particular point plans are introduced to indicate in which sequence the sub activities are performed so plans and sub plans plans for major goal and sub plans for the sub goals okay so next level can be scrutinized based on the previous analysis whatever analysis already you have based on that you can do scrutiny for that particular plan and the analysis proceeds downward until the appropriate stopping point is reached here the appropriate stopping point mean till the time you don't get the element of the task and what is element element means a particular task which is not possible to break further okay okay so for a particular uh, task or particular job you keep on breaking them you keep on branching them till you get a smallest element which is not possible to break further in technical technically okay so till that you need to keep on go further 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 okay so that way you can create the tree or the shape like this for hierarchical task analysis so at the bottom line you will get all these elements okay so it it may looks like this so uh, it's it's an example for the nuclear power uh, no power plant accident sequence so first you uh, know you see this this is the primary objective what is this prevent the radioactive release if there is a nuclear power plant accidents how what is my objective objective is to prevent the radioactive release because if there is a release in the radioactive uh, elements there will be a disaster right so our primary objective is to prevent that to do so to to achieve that objective there are four major goals first goal is maintain the uh, clad integrity because if all these clads are integrated properly there will be less chance to you know release those radioactive elements okay then maintain the rcs boundary pro properly so if you keep on maintaining them in a sequential manner in a phased manner of course there will be less chance to do uh, to meet uh, you know to uh, face such kind of accidents then maintain the contaminant boundary because if the boundaries are maintained properly there will be no contamination so the radioactive products will not come out because the boundary will prevent them uh, prevent those products to come out in the other area okay and the last one is the maintain the rad waste radioactive uh, that elements waste in the uh, confinement zone so these are the major goal so first is maintain the clad integrity second is the rcs boundary maintenance third maintain the contaminant boundary properly and maintain the rad waste 
confinement okay so these are these are the four major goal to be achieved now in the next part what we try to do is we try to break them all these four parts to go into more detail to understand where the possibilities of error so you can see in the next uh, phase what i have written uh, for the first goal that is the maintain the clad integrity we can do control the rx flux within limit okay within limit we can in uh, control the rx flux we can also control the rcs inventory within limit control the rcs temperature within limit also the rcs pressure within limit so inventory temperature pressure if i control control within limit then definitely we will be able to maintain the clad integrity along with controlling the rx flux okay so if we do that we will be able to achieve the first goal in the second goal when we are talking about the maintaining the rcs boundary we have two major major things to be done that is the controlling the rcs temperature within limit and controlling the rcs pressure within limit so you can see here the you know uh, interactions are happening so these two component uh, rcs temperature and rcs pressure okay controlling these two component are actually associated with both uh, rcs boundary and the clad integrity okay so you need to establish so here you are actually getting the branches you are getting the networks you are trying to understand how th so this will help you to give an understanding if there is a problem where the impact will be and what is the kind of impact will be. so if there is a problem with this particular thing it is not going to affect one it is going to affect both right so if that happens definitely the impact is quite high so you you are actually getting a quantitative assessment uh, you are getting an better understanding what is the impact if error happen in this particular area okay similarly for this case uh, where you are talking about the maintain the uh, contaminant boundary you are getting to control the cntmt pressure within limit and explosive within limit so pressure and uh, cntmt explosive within limit if you do so then you can maintain the contaminant boundary and for the rad waste confinement what you have to do you have to that atom rad is within limit you have to control so here is the single impact if this this goes wrong it will impact only here if this goes wrong it will impact only here however if this or this goes wrong it will impact here and here okay so you can really understand that what is the degree of importance of all these sub goals are okay and this you can only get when you do the hierarchical task analysis this is just an example you can have your own data you can really create these networks and you can find the interactions between each goals and sub goals now once we have all those thing what we need to do is in again in through from the task analysis uh, results so each operation from the bottom level of the analysis is taken in turn and each operation is classified in these sections okay action retrieval checking selection and inf information counting i just gave you the examples over here now we got all these details that what are the impacts what are the elements depending on the sub goals goals and the primary objectives once we have all this data ready what we need to do we need to understand that 
error by ident uh, human error okay so human error identification so here you have all these sub goals all these sub goals and for each case we may get an understanding of the human error so you have action you have retrieval you have checking you have selection you have information communication so let us understand in from the next table how we can do the human error identification so for action error so in action error so i just wrote a action error that's why a1 a1 sorry it, this should be a2 okay it's a typing mistake a1 a2 a3 like that i have given you the list and this is not my so it's it's already established example and we have taken it okay so for a1 maybe operation is too long or too short maybe then there will be an error operation is mistimed at the time when it's supposed to happen it didn't happen at that time it happened in some other time so there is an error operation is wrong in in is in wrong direction operation is too little or too much so if if that happens maybe people the concentration varies right so maybe the error can happen then misalignment uh, no right operation on wrong object so all these actions error can be possible for for this particular task that is the action similarly we can have error in the checking so what are the possible checking error maybe so see all these cannot be possible to uh, be together maybe one two or four five six in combination or permutation or a single error okay anything if it is present then that will lead to the error okay so you need to identify so these are possible you may give one or two more terminologies if if that is not being given here okay for checking errors maybe uh, the checking is omitted or checking is incomplete or you did you are looking for right check but the object what to be checked is wrong or uh, no checking is done however it was done in a wrong timing it need to be done before you did the checking afterward so maybe there that is an error so that way checking errors are possible similarly retrieval error uh, error which says that information not obtained or wrong information obtained or information information retrieval is incomplete okay that is possible of course communication error because when we are in a complex system there is lot of chances we have miscommunication or uh, error in communication so information not communicated properly wrong information communicated or information communicated however it is incomplete okay so this way communication errors can happen and of course selection error when you are taking the decision the decision is little wrong so selection either omitted or it's a wrong uh, selection made okay so these are the possibilities so these are the taxonomy of credible error so from from this particular table what you can do you can once you have the hierarchical task analysis ready uh, hta tree is ready you can find out that what taxonomy you are going to use for your analysis at which stage okay then step 4 is the consequence analysis i already explained that once there is an error of course there is going to be an effect okay so that particular effect will give you an understanding how big the problem is so in this particular step the consequences of each error on a system need to be considered and has a kind of implication for that criticality of that error so you are going to get a degree okay you are going to get a gravity understanding gravitational understanding that what what how big the problem is if i make the error now 
this particular step as I mentioned earlier also some cases it will be there some cases it will not be there if there is a possibility to, to recover this particular step is present however if there is no possibility to recover this particular step in that particular stage it will be written as none okay then you need to do the uh, ordinal probability analysis low medium and high so uh, uh, low means if the error has never been known to occur so that is the known probability so of course these all information are from the tacit knowledge experts knowledge um, stakeholders knowledge okay medium probability if the error has occurred on previous occasion uh, however the uh, probability is kind of not very frequent and high if the error occurs very frequently now this comes the you no know, critical analysis if the error would lead to a serious incident okay if the incident is very very serious then it is labeled as critical the critical consequence would be one that would lead to a substantial damage to the plant or the product or causes an personal injury and criticality is assigned in a binary manner 0 1 0 1 okay if it is critical then 1 if it is not critical then 0 okay and then remedy analysis what you need to do over here it is the stage to uh, no, propose error reduction strategies form of suggested changes to the work system that could have prevented the error from occurring or at the very least reduced the consequences and this is done in the form of structured brainstorming exercise because it is it is not possible for us to just get the remedy um, uh, just one click okay so you have to really do a brainstorming activity so the, this the, from here actually it's, it never comes one day okay you have to keep on uh, scrutinizing your earlier results and from there only you can have the data uh, uh, you can have an understanding what are the possible way to um, uh, give you the remedy so it can be equipment it can be training it can be procedure or it can be organizational depending on the previous results that you are getting that variety or type classification of the errors you need to think of equipment redesigning you need to think of if there is a possibility to do the changes in the training you need to think the uh, you know, various provisions of new or redesign of the old procedure or any organizational policy or cultural changes is required to minimize that error okay so this is very very critical and it's it's very much required with uh, you know expert uh, decisions are very much important so here is your actual contribution towards the result okay from this particular portion only you will be able to understand that where uh, where is your uh, where is the novelty of your research or novelty of your task okay some of these remedies may be very costly to implement because you must have done it uh, in different way it needed to be judged with regard to the uh, consequences criticality and probability of the error each recommendation is analyzed with respect to these criteria what incident prevention efficacy so first you need to understand is it effective to reduce the incident so the degree to which the de recommendation if implemented would prevent the incident from occurring cost effectiveness the ratio of the cost implementing the recommendation to the cost of the incident multiplied by the expected incident frequency user acceptance this is also very you know important users acceptance okay that you must have given a brilliant idea however if the users are not accepting it your analysis your your um, uh, you know, intervention doesn't make any change in the whole system 
so it need to be accepted by the user so the degree to which the workers or organization are likely to accept the implementation of recommendation this is a major major challenge this is also challenging because if it is very much costly definitely you will not be able to manage or convince your uh, partner uh, to implement it uh, however this is more challenging if the end users are not going to accept it then the whole process will fail and the practicability because if the app application is not practically possible you will not be able to implement it so all these in you know uh, uh, prevention efficacy cost effectiveness user acceptance and practicability need to be checked when you are actually designing the remedy so let us discuss about the advantages and disadvantages so uh, there are several advantages so it's a structured and comprehensive procedure and yet maintain the you know usability it uses the uh, taxonomy prompt analysis for potential error because you know if you have established taxonomy it becomes very easy for us to you know pick it up so encouraging the validity and reliability of the data such substantial time economy compared to uh, with any other observational study and error re reduction strategies offered as part of the analyst in addition to the predictor analyst however there are lot of disadvantages so it can be tedious as as you understood from the starting to end it takes so much of you know time and you know mm, uh, scrutiny okay you have to be very uh, rigorously involved in the whole process so it's a very tedious and time consuming and uh, if, uh, when it is a complex job okay if it is simple then also still you can manage but if it is a complex task it is very much time consuming extra work is involved if hta is already not available so you have to first uh, get the hta and then do the thing and does not model any uh, cognitive components of error mechanism that is not possible and some predictor errors and remedies are unlikely or lack credibility thus posing a false economy it is possible and current taxonomy lack generalization okay so maybe we can work we can think of a research area where we can do more generalized taxonomy so these are the disadvantages training timing yes initial uh, training timing is kind of 3 hours uh, of course it is not uh, fixed for uh, everyone uh, you may take some more time or someone if uh, already knowledgeable they can pick it up very quickly and it estimate is doubted if the hta calculation is not included pen and paper are sufficient for this thing and computers computerized you know spreadsheet man excel excel uh, may help you to uh, create all this table in the computer and some cases we have you know some specific softwares however i am not very much aware about them i never used it personally but uh, i know there are some uh, such softwares are available where basic data if you provide it will give you the analysis okay so these are the things uh, we wanted to discuss uh, for sherpa okay and this is the whole structure i will pause here for a minute to understand this structure this is the whole structure whatever i discussed in my earlier all slides i just tried to jot it down in together so that you get a very clear understanding how the sherpa looks like and how you are going to start and how you are going to end over here okay so let me uh, pause for for a minute uh, maybe you can uh, take a look of this whole structure of course um, here i suggest everyone to take a task and perform it put it in this particular fashion and try to see how you can complete it okay so hope you understood this particular uh, structure clearly and next uh, class i will take you to the taffy okay so for now uh, thanks 
and uh, I suggest everyone to you uh, know practice this one without practice without doing it yourself you will not be able to get the data correctly thank you Thank you.